Cindy, Liz, and Jody are all survivors of institutional abuse. They join us now to share their story and how they've moved on. And thank you for being here, sharing this story. I think all of you are highlighting something that some folks are naive to. I want to start with you, Cindy, because you wrote a memoir, The Dead Inside. Mm -hmm. How did you eventually get out and then move on with your life? My mother said, I'm not paying anymore. So that meant, ping, I was out. It took 15 years and finally meeting someone, another human who's now my husband, who I really connected with, and I finally felt safe. And that's when my brain cracked open and the memories came tumbling out. But prior to that, I was in this place, period. End of story. Just tried to operate as a normal human, but I, I wasn't. Has this been swept under the rug or? Yeah, it's a hidden phenomenon, and, and it's basically desperate parents that are looking for a quick fix to help their kids because they believe that they can, quote, whip them into shape in some way, Boot shape, camp. or form. Well, it's, it's like a tough love type. Tough of love. It's an authoritarian yeah. sort of uh, discipline, you know, paradigm. Unfortunately, it doesn't work, guys. It doesn't work. So that was Jody, my Jody I understand yeah. you've moved on. Can you tell us how you moved on and what you're doing now for, for survivors? Well, it took me um, a good amount of time, about 15 years, to kind of undo what was done to me. And I decided that I needed to do something to take back my life. And that something was to say, you're not alone. Uh, we can all come together and we can fight this and we can raise awareness and we can make a difference and we can stop these programs from operating. And so we work with state legislators. So again, Dr. Sport Kelly, to be clear, there is no basis for this type of treatment. No, there has been research over and over and over again about punishment style treatment. It does not work in the long term, we know that. I believe, Liz, you're a therapist. I am. I opened a private practice and I exclusively treat survivors of the troubled teen industry with issues related to that and I'm a, a rarity. Um, so for the survivors that come to me, I can relate to them and I understand them and this needs to be happening. So. One, one question I have is, how much did the facilities try to cover up the abuse so that to the outside world, if you were, let's just theoretically say, a parent who had good intentions, how much did they try to hide that from the outside world? Um, I definitely think they, uh, they hide it. They do not have to disclose to you any violations that they've been cited for or any traumas, abuse, suicides, deaths at the program. There's nothing that, that forces them to be transparent about their treatment. and what they tell you as the parent may in fact not be exactly what's happening behind closed doors. So without that, you really can't have a clear picture of where you're sending your child. And it makes so, me I mean, curious how legally. How is this legal? Well, I, I want to ask a, a different question about, because we've been talking a lot about parents. Yeah. And let's be really clear that these aren't just parents who are selecting these facilities. Oftentimes, schools are involved. And I wanted to find out from either of you three ladies, were your schools involved in making recommendations to any of these facilities? I, I can speak to that. I, the school was not involved in mine, but I deal with a lot of survivors, and I can tell you uh, that um, sometimes they can be recommended through an IEP. And then, not only that, but there's transportation services, so you can have your child taken away in the middle of the night, yeah. in handcuffs, to go to one of these yeah. places. Absolutely legal. I, I think that's an important point. I wanted to bring it up because I don't want to leave anyone with the impression that these are just parents who can't control their kids. You mentioned the IEP process. So if you're a child that has special needs, you may have an IEP through your school. That's a legal contract that guarantees you certain special education services with your school. And if you're a kid that's been diagnosed with emotional disturbance or some other kind of behavioral disorder, your school may sit down with parents and some of these educational consultants and recommend these types of facilities as a placement for you rather than being placed in your general education classroom at your typical neighborhood school. There's no federal law that governs these facilities, so it makes it very difficult, which is why uh, a recent government report talks about 34 states have reported over 1,600 staff members involved with abuse in these facilities. And, as, you know, we talked about the places closing 
And we've and had 86 documented deaths since 2000.